program of control says that our uh, well-being, our progress, comes through exerting better and better control over matter. So uh, more powerful machines, more precise control through um, you know, nanotechnology, through, through precision engineering. And, and so our progress means that we'll be able to, or genetic engineering, to be able to, to impose control on a finer and finer level with more and more understanding and thereby someday attain utopia, but in the meantime, uh, improve life, one invention after another, improving life through controlling matter. And so then the same gets turned on to the body. Uh, how do you improve your health? It's again through imposing control on this sometimes wayward machine or imposing control on the other separate selves out there that are competing with you. Because in the story of separation, more for you is less for me. And, and all life forms are in competition with each other. But thankfully, we have technology. We have antibiotics. We have medicine that allows us to impose control on these others so that we can be safer and safer, better and better, more and more dominant, onward and upward. That's the ideology that is, in fact, failing us today. And, and I'll just say, you know, to relate this to current events, um, uh, our response, like COVID-19, you know, out, out of all the health uh, crises that have been rising in my lifetime, uh, chronic disease, autoimmunity, allergies, autism, um, addiction, uh, out of all of these things, none of them fit the paradigm of control. None of them admit to a pathogen that we can dominate and achieve health. Finally, and, and so what has been done about these things? Not very much. We haven't radically altered society because childhood chronic conditions have risen from 1% to 52% in the last 40 years, or no, 60 years. Uh, we haven't like nobody's running around in a panic because of a very real epidemic of all of these conditions. Uh, now COVID-19 comes along and finally, here's a bad guy that we can fight. Here's, here's uh, a problem that after so long and feeling so helpless to stem the, the failure of the program of control and to, to, ad and, and to admit that utopia hasn't come despite hundreds of years of technology, like this is a, a, a crisis of faith, a crisis of identity. Now COVID comes along and finally, here's something that we can control. So all of society's attention turns toward this, this um, virus. Um, and I'm not saying that there is no such thing as COVID-19 or anything like that, but I'm saying, why, why are we so, as a species, as a civilization, pretty unified in combating this threat when we've done nothing about other threats that have actually harmed thousands of times more people. Why? And the key, the answer to that lies in the word I just used, combating. This is a threat that can be combated. And so we, and, and this pattern uh, is visible not just in public health, it's visible in, um, you know, um, politics, where, where there's an awful lot of, or was until recently, I don't know what's happening now, but an awful lot of energy going into combating ISIS, uh, or generating new bad guys for my country to combat, new adversaries, as they're called, China or Russia. But really, like, what's actually harming our society? What is the illness of our society? Is it actually that terrorists are killing thousands or millions of people? Is it that Russia has come in and, and taken 2 million people and locked them in concentration camps? No, the prisons are generated within our own society. Uh, are, are, is China sending uh, agents to infiltrate people's homes and beat people up? physically and emotionally? 
called domestic abuse? Is that caused? No, none of these things that are affecting like a third the population, a quarter of the population, a fifth of the population. I mean, one out of five women I've read are on antidepressants. Is that caused by a bad guy? No. What is causing these things? That's an uncomfortable question that doesn't have ready answers.